So hey guys, someone asked me about the day-to-day -day activities of raising pigs and thought I would chat about that a little bit today. Uh, to be honest, these things are a lot easier to raise than I think even a dog. There's, there's just not a whole lot to it. Uh, a lot of times what I do is I get up in the morning, I go out, I take a real quick lap around the pen, make sure they're not rooting in areas they shouldn't be, you know, potential escape routes or anything like that. You know, last year, the place that we set our pen up, it was actually kind of mounded, and same sort of deal this year, maybe not quite as extreme, but there was a lot more of a mound in the middle of the pen, and by the end of the, the summer, they had rooted things up and actually pushed a lot of that stuff out where the panels were buried down, you know, several inches down. And that's kind of the case this year. We didn't bury our panels, but we did slightly trench them out. So on the outside wall, there was somewhat of a dirt wall. So if they did lean up against it, that panel would, you know, not go outward. So obviously the next thing to do is check food and water. We use a 55 gallon drum for that. And right now I'm only filling it up about a quarter of the way and I could probably go a couple days without having to worry about getting the water. They're just not consuming it. We haven't um, really got into very hot weather yet. But as they start growing and we start getting into more and more warmer weather, I'll have to start filling it up a little bit more. Part of the reason I'm only filling up about a quarter of the way is I like to go out, dump it about every three days. We have pretty irony water and a lot of that iron seems to settle down to the bottom. I like to be able to rinse all that out and just give them nice fresh water. So for the feed, our feeder holds well over 160 pounds. I originally thought it held 150 pounds, but our neighbor, he grows a lot of the crops that actually go into making this feed. He takes it down to the mill. They, you know, grind it up. They throw in some mineral mix into it to make sure everything's all studied out. And then we get them back in these big, huge 80 pound sacks. And that will easily hold two, two and a half bags of that. So we try to interact with them almost daily. Uh, there's a couple reasons obviously for that. My wife really likes going out there with the, the watering hose, sticking that to the fence. She gets a real kick out of that. A lot of times they'll gr try to grab that hose and drag that in. Um, my daughter really enjoys spending time in there. And a lot of times I'll just actually climb in the pen, make sure I rake things out. They seem to go to the bathroom generally in one corner and I'll just rake that up into a little bit of a tighter pile and then we can throw some wood chips on it to help minimize the, the smell of, of the pig pen, I guess. There are a couple reasons that we do try to interact with them. One is, uh, so they're not quite as skittish, so that way when execution day comes, it's a little bit easier to take care of that task. And then the other reason is, uh, it gives us an opportunity to monitor their health a little bit more closely. So one of the common problems that a lot of people have is worms. We've been very fortunate, haven't had to deal with that. Some of the common symptoms of worms is coughing, uh, blood in the stool, Diarrhea, a real pale skin. There's obviously different variances of worms. This is something we haven't had to deal with, but I definitely have done a little bit of research on this or what preparing for it, because I have a feeling at some point we will have to deal with it. I've seen stuff, uh, you know, obviously there's commercial dewormers, uh, but this is also meat you're consuming. So you figure what you're giving that animal, you know, it's gonna eventually end up in you. Uh, I've seen some more old school traditional stuff, such as using tobacco. Uh, using garlic, using DE. I've also seen some real controversial stuff about DE as well, whether it actually really works or not. Uh, so do a little research yourself if you think you got uh, an issue. I'm not quite sure how we'll address it when we get there. So really not a whole lot to it if you think about it. Uh, keeping plenty of fresh food and water and uh, making sure they stay where they need to be and then monitoring their health. It's like any animal, you know, or any pet you might have. Uh, you start learning their habits and if they start doing something out of the norm, you know, maybe you need to address it and, and look into it a little bit deeper. Maybe they stop drinking water or eating food or they're stop losing weight, you know. Pay attention to that stuff. Uh, one other thing I did want to note, the, the pigs that we got, they didn't spend much time outside by the time we got them because it was, you know, it was still pretty cold in this area and they were kind of kept into a, a barn. And the very first day they were all pretty stiffened up when, when the sun had actually came out. Uh, so they actually got a little bit of a sunburn. It sounds like this is kind of a normal thing. So if you just got pigs and they're, they're walking around a little, little weird, uh, could very well be that it seemed to disappear rather quickly about a day or two after that. One other thing I did want to note as well is the pigs that we got, they were about eight weeks old. The industry standard seems to be about six weeks, but there's uh, been a lot of studies that show if you can wait that extra two weeks uh, and get them around eight weeks, there are some big benefits to it. One is their immune system's built up a little bit more. And then you also don't have to do any sort of starter feed uh, for them. So just something to keep in mind. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Good old mud face there. <laughs>